I mean, I've been here for years. I was doing this before you were even born. You were doing this as like a little tiny baby? I was Look, doing this... Whatever. I'm looking. We're here now, and the only answer I have for you is... That's the sound. Answer. I concede the point. Of a crisp, fresh, yingling light lager. Hey, Andy. Hey, Baxter. Hey, video what's games. What's up in... What's up with these red things? Uh, I have... You're... I have killed a tremendous number of them since last we spoke. Oh, really? Yeah, so I... You, you've been... You've been playing off... off camera? Yeah, I got my grind on. Thank God, because I, yep. I was sure bored with this. I discovered that the reason Lars was missing so much last time was that we had the Casey Bat, which is kind of, it was one of the joke weapons in the game, and uh, it has the highest attack of any weapon in the game, but it misses 75% of the time, so it's f friggin' useless. Oh. So I had to go on a on an odyssey last time and uh, spend a bunch of money on, I mean, not that much money, we, we still have 94 grand in our wallet. But uh how does how does that song go? Casey at the at the plate. K Casey at yeah, that, that that's what it's a reference to. Uh Casey at yeah, how, how Casey it go? Is Casey it a poem? At yeah. Is it, I, I don't know. It's a but poem. It goes like oh, I can't Casey he, he rece he's the he's the hero of like this little hometown team and he uh, gets a bat and he is so hubristic that he like disdains the first two pitches he's just like nah man i don't i don't hit pitches like that i'm not i don't get down like that and uh on the on the third pitch he he makes a just eyeball shattering swing which he just completely fails to connect you know that's how they say it goes uh the, guy, the, the guys who are known as, like, the best hitters have also struck out the most number of times. Huh. Like, ba Babe Ruth is, like, known as this, as this great baseball player, but he struck out more than anybody else also. It's just that when he did manage to hit the ball, he hit it really well. Huh. Must be hard to control all that power. That's With what she said. With great power comes great responsibility. Thanks, Uncle... Um... Mike? No. John? No. What was, was Spider-Man's uh, uncle's name? Uncle Ben? Pericles? <laughs> uncle Esophagus. Get him! Oh god. So, uh, we didn't have an episode last week. No, I was in space. By which I mean Virginia. Space, huh? It was, uh, Labor Day weekend. Labor Day weekend. So how was your Labor Day weekend? That's did you play, right. any cards, play any cards against humanity? Yes, I did. Okay, what was your best play? Um... Oh dear, I can't remember. I can't remember. Okay, I was... what was your one play? Uh, what brought the orgy to a screeching halt? And uh, my answer was making the penises kiss. Because <laughs> I am a man of style and erudition. That, uh... That in the orgy. I mean, if, if that's all it takes to end your orgy, then you have a very flimsy orgy. Yeah. <laughs> I went to a flimsy orgy once. No one survived. I, uh, on the other hand, did not have such an exciting Labor Day weekend. What did you do? I was busy trying to think of topics for my thesis. What's the topic of your thesis gonna be? I don't know, I didn't finish the assignment. Oh. 
before. No, we I played. finished the assignment. The assignment was to come up with uh, four topics. I came up with three. You didn't finish the assignment. You get a D. You don't get grades. By D, I mean, of course, D's nuts. As far as I can tell, uh, my my professor's grading strategy is everyone gets an A at the end. <laughs> I know that's not the case because some of my classmates have gotten B's and C's and stuff, but as far as, far as I know, you know, I just, just am assigned an A at the end. Don't ask me why. Don't ask me why my work is so much better. But, there you go. I think the people can rate, infer what's actually been going on. Been getting jiggy. Getting... So, I'm not going to bore the audience with, you know, my, my perspective thesis topics. But I will bring up a couple of issues that, that I raised in this process. Hang on. We're already boring the audience with this horrible video game, so... No, it's this... This video game was actually directly relevant to one of my ideas. Oh my god. In fact, inspired by this game. In fact, inspired by recent events in this game. My brain just shattered into ten trillion pieces. Who are you? Anyway, uh, so what's the deal? Well, so as you have undoubtedly noticed, we haven't been having much fun recently. No. It's been, uh, a little bit tedious, let's say. Yeah. And, uh, again, as we've noted, it might not be the case if we were playing this uh, in a different format, yeah. in a more concentrated format. But playing but... it piece by piece makes it makes all the boring parts seem interminably long. Well, it, 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 it's like it's like we're playing it through a microscope. Yeah. You know, it's like we're we're talking about every little thing that happens as it happens, and uh, it's take, just taking us forever to get through it. Like, look at all those guys. Yeah. Gonna... That's like you were saying, I mean, if, if the in, encounters were random, like in a Final Fantasy game, it'd be a little different, but you walk in there and there's like ten of those guys and they're all gonna come toward you. Yeah. I can't believe anyway. we're not to the point where like the Nobbies run away from us yet. Oh my god. That was awesome. Oh my god. That was the... That's the best spell I've ever seen. Is that lit three? <laughs> yeah. Drop some hot lit on him. Yo, that Navi's so, got lit, bro. <laughs> oh so I would like I would like to propose a a thesis right now. Drop a bomb on it. That who's on auto? Huh? I put it on auto fight. Because all I ever do is just attack these dudes. Um You can Okay, anyway, I was just, uh, do you put everyone on auto, or do you put particular characters on auto? Uh, yeah, you just put everybody on auto. It's like when you hit triangle in Persona 4. You just oh, okay. go into auto fight mode. Anyway, uh, you're already on. up at 668. Mm -hmm. um, so, I propose that there have to, there has to be bad parts of a video game. In order to uh, highlight the good parts, interesting that that the experience comes in. Uh, it's sort of a rhythmic thing where you go through all these bad parts that are laborious, so the good parts uh, feel like uh, a festival. You have huh. to imagine like you know, so. Back in, in time, back in, like, let's say, the Middle Ages, when life was crappy for everyone, <laughs> how you you labor and, and, you know, life is shit and everything's terrible for, you know, all but one week out of the year. And then for, well, a little more frequently than that, but then for that one week, 
you have like a festival and everything is 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 different you get to like shit on your landlord and <laughs> you get to badmouth the king and you can take out all your pr and it's it's just something very different yeah uh a philosopher named uh joseph peeper wrote about this in a book called In Tune with the World. If he were wise, uh, he would have named his book Jeepers Creepers. And I will read you a quotation from this book. All right. Bearing on this idea. If I can find it. Well, maybe I can't find it. Well, are you sure? Does it have to be bad sometimes, or can it just be slow and exciting at other times? Well, not not bad, but laborious. And it, when we criticize things like video games, we tend to equate that with bad. Hmm. I mean, think about about any of the criticisms you've heard of video games. How it's not that it's like painful, because it's a video game. You know, it's not it's not real work. So. Anytime someone is like in a stressed out position, or or then that's a bad example. In in a position that's not particularly interesting, it's uh, what is this thing? Uh, it's the Electro Spectre. <laughs> Have you seen this before? No, this is a this is our uh, the seventh uh, Soundstone boss. Oh, you you hit him! I didn't watch you hit a boss. I was looking for this this book for this quotation that I was. I'm about to drop a bomb in this room. Trying to remember. Shit. But you see what I mean? <laughs> How, uh, because a video game is is such a, uh. Uh oh. Oh god. I hit F4. <laughs> oh. I don't play like that. <laughs> you're, you're starting to save scumming. Yep, I'm just I'm not having it, man. Is that where this has come? Yep. I don't... I don't tolerate not being told that things have shields. So our first round of attacks are just gonna suck. Shield killer! Zap! What? Oh, but the God. thing is, it's a, ma it's a matter of contrast. You know, how you have to have those laborious moments in order for the for the good moments, the exciting or, or, uh, just e maybe easy moments, yeah. uh, seem all the more festive in their, in their tone. Okay, that all makes pretty good sense. Yeah, that was one of my ideas, it was to, to talk about elements of, uh, of products. That are like that. You know how you get a product that m might be somewhat difficult to use or needlessly complicated, uh, so that uh, the the act, is, other elements of the act itself, will seem more enjoyable. Right. In order to have that contrast, like maybe maybe a thing has a crank on it that is uh, it's like really hard to turn. But, so the thing that it does seems more, uh, weighty. You know, it seems more... <laughs> Sorry, that made me think of the, uh, the egg machine. What is the egg machine? The, the, uh, it's is like, that hey, a Sonic the Hedgehog thing? No, that's Eggman. Come on, get your head in the game. Uh, I'm thinking of, uh, I'm about to draw an unfavorable comparison, but, uh, in... In crap, huh? Yep. Stupid old crap. God, an endurance run where they, they turn. Would you like to spend some time turning the crank? And then they get, like, garbage out of the vending machine? Oh, oh yeah. They burp. Yeah, they just sit there. What? 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 <laughs> Dude! The greatest disaster. Underlying ever all ball. festive joy, kindled by a specific circumstance. There has to be an absolutely universal affirmation extending to the world as a whole, to the reality of things, and the existence of man himself. Whoa. 
For man cannot have the experience of receiving what is love, unless the world and existence as a whole represent something good and therefore beloved to him. Interesting. Festivity is impossible to the naysayer. The more money he has, and above all, the more leisure, the more desperate is this impossibility to him. Huh. So you're saying, like... all connected. I, I found all those on different pages. So if you had, like, a... Oh, God. A, we fell in a hole into, like, a light switch rave or something. I like a light switch rave. The day of rest is not just a neutral interval inserted as a link in the chain of workaday life. It entails a loss of utilitarian profit. Oh. In voluntarily keeping the holiday, men renounce and the yield of a day's labor. Long well, road getting chick -chick here. Yeah. Soon I'll be. Soon I'll be. So, up, oh, we're stuck in a loop. What? Pull that needle off. Happen oh, there we go. To us, beep boop. Oh, what? Happening? My. He's just, he's just pressing down that one key on the keyboard. <laughs> not letting up. Out on the wall? Or are they. No. They're not. So sounds good, man. So our the next sound sound is just gonna be one continuous tone. Oh, never, never mind. Good old Lumine Hall. Oh, another thing I did. Over the weekend, though, over last weekend, though, shoot, was watch almost all of Battlestar Galactica. Yeah, oh, just blitzed right through it. Oh God, Andy, what the hell is going on? It's it's uh, the land of the lost. Look how tiny we are. You uh, you took your your inflatable raft down the river. No, went over the waterfall. Now there are dinosaurs. Look at that huge dinosaur! I recommend you go talk to that dinosaur. I... I feel certain that that's not a good idea. Dude. Go talk to that dinosaur. Oh, God. Ask him... Well, he's smiling. Hey, hey buddy. Oh. Uh... Well, at least now you know. He's a wet -nosaur, Apparently. Spy on him. A wet no sword? That's what it says. So when he was a baby, did he have a wet no sword wet nurse? You were just on wet a, nurse a roll of horribleness today, aren't you? <laughs> what was the other thing I said? I don't. I choose not to something think about, about it. Something about vaccines. Oh, vax memes. A vaccine to get against get... memes. People, listen to me. Vaccines are a government conspiracy to kill off a large portion of the population. Per Don't get vaccines. Particularly if you are an undesirable minority. I urge you <laughs> yeah. not to get a vaccine. <laughs> oh god. Uh I'm gonna I'm gonna crawl into this nipple here. Oh, there's no problem. Let's see on follows. What? You know. Uh. Oh. <laughs> hey, I buddy. didn't see that one coming. He's hit the moon. It's oh. the ego, ego orb. orb. That's <laughs> something I totally expected to find in a world with dinosaurs. Yeah, the me too. Orb. Yeah, it's. What? <laughs> Look at his expression. <laughs> It's it's not even concerned about fighting us. It's just like, eh. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Just um, there you go, or just stop and moving here. 
But yeah, let me tell you about Battlestar Galactica. That show is pretty freaking awesome. But it made me realize something. Oh. About about shows and about my, what I like about shows and what I don't like. What do you like about shows? Well, it made me realize what I didn't like. Oh. What do you not like well, about I, shows? Well, I, I, I like a lot of things about shows. I like shows uh, that use models instead of computer graphics. Oh, totally. Uh, I like shows about space. I like sci-fi that don't have aliens. Are there no aliens at all uh, in Battlestar Galactica? They never, like, encounter not, any? Not in the new one. There are in the old ones, but the new one has no aliens. Well, okay, I mean... The Cylons are... They're all from the same, uh... Humanity created them at some point thousands of years ago. Yeah. You know, they've, they've developed on an independent course for thousands of years, so they're pretty much aliens, but they're not completely... I mean, they, they already had a, a history of thousands of years before the show even started, so it's nothing new. It's not like Star Trek where you're meeting a new alien race every week. Right. Um, anyway, uh, what I don't like about TV shows just in general. Okay, I like TV shows that or stories that evoke strong emotions. You know, when you feel invested in what's happening on an emotional level. I think it's really bad when you can tell that the story is trying to evoke emotions. Mm -hmm. I feel like if, when you have a strong emotion, uh, emotional reaction to something, it should be totally incidental to what's happening in the story. I see. And the, the story itself should tell you what's happening in a very matter-of-fact, very straightforward way. Hmm. Think about how, uh, like, the Iliad tells you something. About how, it's like, and so-and-so did this and that, uh... And, and then died, or lived, or what have you. Right. They don't... It's not told in a very affected way. Battlestar Galactica was, is. Like, uh, it really it's, tries to pull, pull at the heartstrings? It really plays it up in, like, an almost soap opera-type fashion. Hmm. And I didn't like that. I, I feel like it, it should have let let me uh, import or uh, uh, project onto it the the emotional content rather than uh, trying to ham it up so much to deliver it to me. Can you give an example of how it did this? Ugh. A lot of the emotional moments seem to play out to no purpose. Uh. Like, when, when, uh, they have one, one of the members of the crew is a Cylon, right? Yeah. Uh, they just pick one up at one point. And it's a, it's a girl Cylon, and she, uh, gets married to one of the guys on the crew. Uh, okay. And then it, uh, she gives this speech at some point about how every day I have to work for the respect of people on this crew. Uh, and that, like, played out to no purpose. That speech. It was just kind of there in order for us to feel sorry for her. Huh. And that that felt really cheap to me. You know, it's like if if you're gonna have that speech, you need to it needs to go somewhere. That needs to be particularly relevant to the event at the moment. You know, you need to like it needs to be in a moment where her uh uh, loyalty or is being questioned or, or something. And it really wasn't at the time. They were involved in some completely different sort of 
thing. Like, there was a, a general rebellion on the ship or something. Yeah. And she's being pissy about being a Cylon just in the middle of it, just like... Well, no, she, she's not being pissy. I mean, they make it pretty clear that she's, like, one of the loyal ones and that she's just doing her job and, you know, so on and so forth. But she gives that speech and... Well, like I said, it, it, feel, it felt cheap. It felt like a get, you know? Yeah. To make us feel, uh... To, to put us on her side. Wait, it felt like to a make what? Us feel a get. You know, like, like of, of course, if she plays that card, we're gonna be on her side afterwards. Oh, okay. It, it was a real pathos sort of, sort of moment. Okay. Oh, it's like, like, a, like, like a, like a gotcha yeah. kind of moment. It's like, ha now you have to feel sorry for me. Uh... I guess. It didn't feel, uh... 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 Hey, buddy. Like, uh, uh... What what would you call that... That attitude? Where you... It didn't feel tricky like that. You know, it wasn't like they were tricking me into it. It's like they were... They were doing the, the, the exact thing that needed to be done in order for me to, to feel that way at that moment. Huh. But it felt like, like, of course. And the emotion didn't feel incidental to the events. It felt like... The events were informing me of how I should feel at that moment. It's like they didn't have a better way of conveying uh, why I should be on her side and not the other side. Right. Well, it's like the, it's like the 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 moral uh, situation was was too ambiguous that they had so they had to sort of jerk me around in order to get me on on the other side. Right. And I didn't appreciate that. Ah, oh, son of a bitch took our tender crowd. <laughs> oh yeah, that super <laughs> useful tender crowd. We sure need some of that. W it was our. What's up with all these? Oh, that was our. Well, this is probably a uh, a uh, uh, story event. Yeah, he's gonna tell us something very important. You may want to take notes. Oh, man. I got my pen, uh, and I don't have any paper, but I'm just going to write this on my arm. You literally cannot be trusted to write things down when I tell you to write them <laughs> down, so I will get a pen, and I will get this little field notes notebook, and I will write down what this you... weird face rock has to say. Well, then we're both going to have notes, because you, you can... Baxter... You can't trust me. No. I have to work every day <laughs> for the respect of this team. You do work every day for that respect. You work on throwing it in the garbage and <laughs> flushing it down the toilet. I'm ready. I have a pen and I and I'm gonna write this down. Right. I'm I'm right I'm writing. The chosen <laughs> one. <laughs> Is this gonna be on the test? My destiny is not only mine. I can tell you're not writing that because it takes you longer to write each you word. You want me to put this to notebook and this pen next to this microphone so you can hear me writing this? <laughs> yeah. In the fact, no, you know what I want you to do? Destiny of the whole universe. Verse. Can you hear that? I I want you after this is over, I want you to snap a photo of the uh these notes and I want you to make it the cover image for this video. Okay. On YouTube. I'll i I'll see if I can do that. In which all of you will overlap each other? You think I'd go this far for a bit? Yes, I would, but this thing, <laughs> it's, it's not necessary. It's not even necessary to understand that. I, yeah, not all for nothing. Necessary to <laughs> understand. Okay, 
But when you write it, you have to write understand then, because this moment will be over by the time you read it later. Oh, right. At the time, in parentheses. And, and go ahead and write down the time, just to be sure. Uh, the time is 0049. Oh my gosh, we, we've been at this for 49 minutes? No, I'm saying the actual time on the clock is it's 1249. Uh, on 2013, 09, How long have we been at this, by the way? I, 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 you're the one with the timer, right? Uh, almost exactly 30 minutes. Do you remember the giant okay. step in on it? That is one of your sanctuary. It's a spot which gives you power. Oh, that's one of my sanctuary, huh? Yeah. Giant step. Sanctuary. One what of my sanctuary? And it allows you to realize all, all your skills. skills. There was a monster that predicted it. The monster was influenced by the power. You must defeat those monsters. You must reach all eight power spots in the world. When the sound starts across the middle of all eight power spots, you finally see your world. Okay. Wait, weren't there 12? Uh -huh. I remember there being more than eight. How many do we have? Seven. We just defeated the seventh one. Uh, oh. I thought there were more than that. All sounds to reach. Your world. Maybe there's more sounds, but maybe there's only eight locations. I'll tell you all of the power spots. One, giant step. Oh, here we go. You gonna write this down? One, giant step. Two, Lilliput steps. This isn't funny anymore. This... My fingers are getting tired. Uh, yeah, this, this bit has gone on. You should have known that. I, I expect you to have the sort of discrimination necessary to make an entertaining bit, Baxter. If well, that is your real name. Fuck you. You lied on your resume. You told me you were interesting. <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> That's just brutal, man. <laughs> Magnet. Heal. No. The bit is over. I'm actually... This is happening, Andrew. Six pink cloud. Oh, no, just just ask Rufio. He'll he'll tell you about that he one. He just knows it. <laughs> it's just called Lumine Hole. Oh man, I went to the Lumine Hole in Vegas. You don't want to, none of that. It's uh, the uh, the girls in there. They're the, all drill buckets. The lichen lives in the cat. Lichen, huh? Aren't lichens those little green, like, things that grow on the sides of rocks? Yeah. They're a combination of an algae and a fungus, and they work together. Really? Yeah. It's both? Yeah. It's, it's, a, it's a symbiotic relationship, so the fungus, like, covers and grows on top of the algae and eats some of the glucose that the algae makes through photosynthesis, and in exchange, the algae gets to like live on the f on the the fungus, and uh, is it provides food in exchange for protection, basically. I feel like I heard somewhere that they take hundreds of years to grow. Yeah. That's incredible. That something so insignificant would take so long to develop. But they can also grow in places where like other things that are just there's like lichen that live in Antarctica. And in, like, the far Arctic and in, like, deserts and stuff. It's living in, um, like, super inhospitable places. So what is mold? Is it a plant or is it a fungus? I think mold is a fungus. But I'm not 100% on that. Uh, what are those little green things? Those are the I can't even tell what that is. They're tendas. Oh. You just can't see the whole thing. Yeah. Eight tenda. Tendai. Tende, yeah. Ten... Tendana. <laughs> Tendides. Didn't you think that the tenda have some particularly beautiful women? No? What? I got with a tenda chick once. She gave me tenda herpes.
Hey. Damn right I'm a foreigner. He went to a place that was known as an economics. Agos. Ego stick. I go. I go stick. That's gotta be a reference stick. to something. Yeah. Yup. Nope. Ugh, no. I'm not cool with that. Oh, he, he's, he's the ATM here. I go stick. I don't get it. Have you heard any of the uh, uh, response to the recent release of Earthbound? I saw um, we on Giant Bomb. I saw Patrick getting all excited about it, but yeah, I, I read that thing too. But uh, it, it just amazes me that there's such uh, love for this game. I, I don't get it. Yeah. I don't. I don't see what the what the appeal. I mean, besides that. Back in the day, it would have been a passable RPG, but it's no Final Fantasy. Yeah, I, and I, I mean, it's play... like... It's got kind I... of... Maybe it was like... Maybe there was something about the time when this came out that were like it was really funny to whoever played it, or, you know... Like, some things just have their... have their time and their place, right? Where... It doesn't seem particularly clever to me. I mean, there are some things that are uh, uh, funny about it, but that, like the uh, uh, what were those guys that that uh, talk in that really crazy typeface? Uh, Mr. Saturn. Yeah, the Saturn people. That that that's not that's not cute or interesting or anything. That's like, like it was funny for like two minutes. Okay, one thing I thought was really funny about this game was when we just had to wait for the waterfall. <laughs> for like three full minutes. We yeah, that like, was pretty good. What are we doing? But that was such a, uh, a, a, you know, episodic thing. You know, most of this game is just kind of like, okay, it's kind of funny that you're, you're hamburgers carrying around all these, you know, it's like, well... Maybe, maybe none of this had been done before. Yeah. Maybe this was like a, a real revelation in game design when it came. I don't know. Who can say? But, uh... Seems odd to me. And Patrick got real, real weird about the end of this game. About what, uh... His emotional response and... Speaking across generations of players, to What? Yeah. I don't even know did what you, that means. Did you read the thing? No, I, I sort of glanced through it because I didn't want to, like, mess up the ending or anything. Oh, well, then it didn't, it didn't uh, spoil anything. Oh, so. okay. So, what was... The... You beat Guy Gas! Whoa, spoilers, dude. Yeah, big, uh... Yeah. What's, what's, what's the didn't, matter with you? Oh, sorry. Did you did, did you not want to know that that you that you beat Guy Gas? You fight Guy Gas. Ah! Yes. Shut sorry, up. <laughs> I don't even know what a horn you, uh, wife is. You attack him, and eventually, uh, you stop because because he's you dead. Attacked him enough. Well, that sounds great. No. So. Yes. Riddle, riddle me this. Riddled. If, which one of these is more scary? Spiders. Uh, or which one would you be more scared of? Uh, a man breaks into your house, busts through the door, and points a gun at you? Or a ghost busts through your door and points a gun at you? I like that the ghost has a gun. That's pretty great. Uh... Which one's scarier? 
Is the gun the gu the ghost is holding a ghost gun or a gun gun? It's a regular gun. Oh man, this ghost can affect the real world. Uh. Huh. I'm gonna do with ghost. Like I, I just oh. look at it and I know it's a ghost. Yeah, it has a white sheen over it. You know all that. It's, it's kind of transparent. Okay. Uh, yeah, the ghost is probably worse than a regular dude with a gun. You know, I was thinking about this the other day. Clearly. And I, I really think the, uh, the guy would be scarier. Why? Because you kinda, you kinda know what, what he's about, and you know if a guy just busts through your door and points a gun at you, he's dangerous. He... But you really don't know why a ghost would be there. Yeah, that's terrifying. And I what mean, if that's you know, a you rape even... ghost? Well, but you, you, it could be so many things. You know, you don't know why he's pointing. You don't even know if that gun's loaded. You don't know if it might shoot ghost bullets. <laughs> you don't know why. I mean. He can be doing any number of things. This can all be like part of a a uh, uh, a scene he's doomed to reenact throughout eternity, and he doesn't even perceive you. None of those things make me feel better about this ghost busting into my house. Or again, oh, again, possible rape ghost busting into my house with a gun. What? Why would a ghost rape you? I don't. Why would a regular person rape me? Well, because it's awesome. Because <laughs> it, it feels really good to have sex. And you want to do that even, you know, if the other person doesn't. That seems pretty obvious to me, man. I don't know. <laughs> I feel profoundly terrible about this whole conversation. <laughs> well, but a ghost... I mean, he, he probably doesn't even have, you know, like, genitals. He, he can, you don't know he what's... can affect a gun. He's got, like, hands. He can put his hand yeah, in you. Ha but he's got a sheet. Maybe he doesn't have hands. Maybe the gun's just floating there in front of him. But he can rape me with telekinesis. That's worse. A regular person could rape you with telekinesis. <laughs> What? Didn't you ever see that Star Trek episode where uh, th that race of aliens raped Deanna Troy? That was a, a movie, wasn't it? No, that was, that was an episode. I don't. Uh. Uh. I don't remember. There was a race of aliens that came from a telekinetic planet. And they have them on the ship, and one of them keeps raping Deanna Troy, and they can't figure out who it is, and then they accuse one guy. Oh, and... yeah. Because he keeps using his telekinesis to pretend that he's other people. I remember. Yeah, that's an episode. There's also yeah. an instance of brain rape that happens in uh, one of the movies. Gross. Yeah. Calling it brain rape is a lot, a lot more <laughs> worse than calling it mind rape. The, the mind is the brain, Andrew. Obviously, you haven't read *The Mind and the Brain* by uh, uh, but, uh, what's the guy's name? I'm gonna look it up. He's just a, he's just a pawn of the military brain industrial complex. Shut up. <laughs> That's all I have to say for that. Shut up. Benet. This is Alfred Benet. Brain industrial complex. I feel pretty good about that. I don't know why. <laughs> uh. If I were your third grade English teacher, I'd give you an F. If I were your fourth grade English teacher, I'd give you a C minus. Well, my fourth grade English teacher had 
low standards. Who was your third grade and fourth grade English teachers? Um, in fourth grade, I think it was Mrs. Bell. Third grade, I can't remember. In third grade, I had Miss Jessie, and then she died, like, halfway through the year. Good God. And after, th after that, I had Mr. V. Um, and then in fourth grade, I had Miss McGee. What's my English teacher? Okay. English and reading were two different classes. Yeah, you had to learn to read in one class, you had to learn to write in a different one. Which is bizarre, because... Huh, we know how to write, thank you. <laughs> we just did it, you know? It was like... I remember that the, the textbook told you, like, all these grammatical rules, and you didn't even have to bother, because you just wrote what sounded right. Yeah. And not what sounded wrong. Yeah, do the right thing, and don't do the wrong thing. It's as simple as always, that. Always, always put the correct answer. If you put the incorrect answer, go back, erase it, and put the correct answer. Yeah, duh. I mean, duh. Always do the appropriate thing. Never do the inappropriate thing. Yeah, if you got an option you know, do, do good, don't do bad, idiot. I don't know why this if is so hard for you. If there are two options open to you, and one of them is the wrong option, do not take it. Yeah. Take the other option. This is stupid and I hate it. But the wetness ore became tame, so that's okay. Hey, you're not gonna have. Can't you. Since you did all that grinding off screen, can't you just run past all this? I'm trying to, but that one was in the way. In the way. What about that purple one? I'm going around it. Is that in the way? What about that purple one? That one's in the way. Ugh. Let's talk about the way real quick. Okay. I love the way. How do you feel oh, about the truth uh, and the light? <laughs> There's a uh, building. It might be a church. Uh, over by the museum. Yeah. And it just it's called the way. Awesome. And it has the way written in big letters on the front of it. And I thought, what a perfect uh, landmark. How, if you wanted to talk about stuff that's near it, you could just say it's by the way. <laughs> that's terrible. Ring, ring. What's up, Dad? Just get a record from Dad, and I think we should call it a day. Yeah, call it. I'm done. But first, I'm gonna call this Tinda. What's up, man? Oh, let's call her Mom too. Hey, Mom. Ring her up on the two can. <laughs> oh, 